Welcome to Texas Telestrator presented by BMW. I am your host, John Harris. And it's time to look at the Buffalo Bills and get a good scouting report on what the Bills do. I didn't really have much of a drive to work off of from the Texans' loss to the Titans, so it's playoff time. So let's dive into a scouting report on the Buffalo Bills. And we're going to start with their offense. Josh Allen at quarterback. You've got Devin Singletary with some good wheels as a rookie. You've got Dawson Knox, a tight end you're going to see here in motion right there, a rookie out of Ole Miss. And by the way, Dawson Knox, A.J. Brown, and D.K. Metcalf are all in the same offense at Ole Miss. Wow. Holy smokes. Now, Knox is not really going to be a factor on this play, and neither really is Singletary. But the guy on this play is John Smoke Brown. Now, he didn't get that name because he liked, he liked to uh, fire up some lung darts. He got that name because he could run and run really fast and smoke by guys. And you'll see that here against one of the better corners in the league, Stephon Gilmore. This is going to be essentially a one-on-one with those two, but because of the route combination, but also because Brown is probably the most dangerous in this uh, format, Devin McCourty's got a built-in double team on John Brown. So John Brown's going to push up vertically. And then he's going to kind of read what's going on. He's got an opportunity to probably break this to the corner, depending on coverage, or maybe take it right down the seam or bend this thing this way. And he's eventually going to go with that option right there, and he ends up with a touchdown, and you'll see why. Now, the Bills eventually take from a bunch, and they end up with kind of a eh, close to a stack twins here. Josh Allen's going to fake the zone and then kind of half boot because he's going to get some pressure from Van Oy on this side over here. And so Van Oy, being smart, is going to head that off, basically, so Allen can't boot all the way. So what that's going to do is take away this little whip route right here, which is actually wide open. But because Van Oy kind of stands in the way, Allen's like, you know what? I'm not going to take that. It's second and 13. I got to throw it over Van Oy. I'm not sure I like that. So let's go ahead and, you know what? No risk it, no biscuit. Let's throw this thing as far as we can and see if we can't score. And that's exactly what the Bills do. So you get that little half boot. It's going to set up right there. And now, here's where the toughness of Josh Allen comes in. He is not scared to hold that football because A, is arm strength, and B, he's a big guy. And it's kind of built in, and he's kind of wired that way to hold it a little bit. He's going to launch, and all of a sudden, oh, let it go. Man, look, this is, there's no, he doesn't step into this throw. He's kind of fading back and throws it from the 37 to the 20. From the third, uh, 30, where did we throw that to him? Right there to there. That's a long way. That's 30 yards. That's another 23. That's 53 yards on a dime. Brown never broke stride. Now, the key to this is Brown. So let's take a look at Smoke Brown here going against Stephon Gilmore, one of the best corners in the league. Brown's going to push vertically. And the key here is Brown gets on Gilmore's feet almost immediately. Look how he gets on his feet. What that does is it forces Gilmore to make a decision. I got to turn. And so he turns. See him turn right there? And as soon as he turned, Brown had him. Brown's like, I got you. But the Patriots have it covered, right? They got a double team, but oh, no. As soon as Smoke Brown got there, it's over. He's even. He's leaving. He was even with McCourty, who took a shallow angle too shallow an angle because he expected Brown to do this or kind of start in there. McCourty didn't anticipate him going here. And because of that, he's too shallow. He should have been back kind of reading this so he could run underneath it and let Gilmore get back to play it that way. But because McCourty takes a shallow angle, because Brown smokes Gilmore here, all of a sudden Brown is gone. There's all kinds of green, fake grass over here you can get to, and Allen throws a dime. That explosiveness is worrisome. Worrisome. And then, of course, that dance in the end zone. Get after it, John Brown. Get after it. There you go. All right. Now, offensively, that's what they can do. But what worries me a little bit more is the Bills' defense. So let's take a little, let's take a look at what they were able to do against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, there are a bunch of really good players, even players you may not even know the names of. There's a guy in here, number 97, Jordan Phillips, one of the more underrated 
interior players in the league. You got these three linebackers right here who I think play together as well as anybody. Matt Milano, number 58. Tremaine Edmonds, a second year stud at inside linebacker number 49, and Low Alexander right here, number 57. And then in the secondary, you've got two really good safeties. You got Micah Hyde right here, number 23, and number 21 right here is Jordan Poyer. And they play really well together. The star in the defense, though, is Tredavious White right here. That's the guy that really can become a problem. Now, one of the stars that you will not see in this picture is the defensive coordinator, Leslie Frazier. He will throw a lot of different looks at the Texans, and this is one of those looks that I have a feeling the Texans will see that they throw against the Steelers. They like to show bodies up front. So you got seven guys up front. Now, this is a third down and 10 play. So these routes have got to get to the sticks. Those are going to take a little bit to develop. So, I mean, they could bring all seven, but eh, they want to really do that. They want to protect as much as possible against anything that could get to five or six, the guy can run to 10. So this is a pretty well schemed up blitz here. A little sim pressure, if you will. What you gotta figure out is which guys are coming, which guys are dropping. And that isn't easy. And as soon as you realize it, you gotta adjust right at, as soon as you see it. And I'll show you what, what I'm talking about here in a second. The other thing you've got to be able to do for the Texans is stay true to what the scheme call is. The Patriots always say, do your job. And you'll see where a guy tried to do his job and somebody else's job, and it really kind of cost him. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Now, have you figured out who's coming? Well, he's one guy that wasn't showing in that front seven. He's coming. That's Micah Hyde. But who up here is dropping? Well, the two droppers are right here. These two guys are going to end up dropping. That's Jerry Hughes and Teron Johnson, the nickel. They're going to drop because what the Steelers are doing are splitting the protection. Three guys on this side and two over here because they're anticipating at least two of these guys coming over here, and then the other three plus the back can handle whatever's on this side. But you can see Edmonds drops out. These two drop, and you're rushing one, two, three, four, sorry, uh, yeah, and then five. So five with six should mathematically have it done. But because the Steelers split that protection, you essentially have two on one right here. Now, Ramon Foster does a nice job of realizing it and getting over there to help. Unfortunately, he helps on Milano and not the guy he should help on in Trent Murphy. Now, so ball snap. Poyer's coming over here to play a deep half. He's going to play a rolled up corner, and then Levi Wallace is just going to match up on this route right over here. Here comes Hyde. Now, here's the key. Matt Filer, right tackle, is the key. He gets his hands on Trent Murphy, but then he tries to get hands on Micah Hyde, too. It's like, whoa, do you realize what you're doing by letting him inside? Now you got a back on the defensive end, and we don't like that. So Filer actually should have just stayed on Murphy let Connor go all the way to Hyde, then maybe you've got something here, maybe right there, maybe you don't have a whole lot, maybe you hit the shallow crosser and hope he gets the first down, but you at least would have a whole lot better than Trent Murphy with a sack. And that's what happens. You miscommunicate, you've got six to block five, and one guy comes free. Take a look at it from this side where you can see the rush. Dropper, dropper. He's going over that way, he's dropping. So he's coming. Coming, coming, coming. Here comes Hyde off this edge. Now, if Connor, this is my guess, based on this, with at least five guys coming, they want the five guys up here to be responsible for the five rushes the Bills bring. So they call it a 5-0, 5-0, That would leave Connor on anybody off the ball that comes, which would mean Hyde. So Connor, look at his eyes. Connor is looking over here. He's thinking that's coming from that side. He's thinking it's coming here. Now, Connor doesn't do a bad job because he recognizes it pretty quickly. He's like, whoa, they're not coming. And all of a sudden, look, he gets his eyes back over here. He does a good job. That's exactly what you want the running back to do. Ramon Foster sees it. He's going to come back over here. The problem is, filer has got to stay here because there's the guy coming off the edge, according to a 5-0, which I don't know if that's a protection, but that's what I would assume. connor has got to come get this. If they got that and that, you're protected. Now your six are protecting against their five. Now it's up to the Steelers wide receivers to get open. Unfortunately, Murphy breaks through here. 
two guys are actually coming to Micah Hyde when you don't need but one, and Murphy ends up making the sack. It's a good scheme. It's all about communication, though. Communication of what the protection needed to be just wasn't there for the Bills. Now, let's get to that man, Tredavious White, right here. He's going to have a key interception on this play. And the Bills, again, I don't say get tricky, but they're going to bring an extra guy. The key is, who is the extra guy? Is it this man right there, Teron Johnson, a la Kenny Moore, coming off the slot right here? Or is it this corner over here, which I believe is Kevin Johnson, coming here? Or are they both dropping? Is it maybe Milano coming? Trying to figure out who's coming, well, that's tough against the Bills' defense. But what you do know is that 27 is going to be right here lurking at all times. It's one of the best for a reason. So let's take a look here. This is a first and 10 play. First and 10. Take the profit rookie quarterback. Well, he doesn't do that, and it costs the Steelers badly. So Duck Hodge is going to take the snap. A little return motion here. And the Bills, you can see him adjust. Hyde going in the middle of the field. Poyer's coming over here to replace Johnson, who's coming on the blitz. So they've got five, and now the Steelers pick it up. Here's that 5-0 I'm talking about. These five are going to take care of these down guys, and the back is going to take anybody coming. He gets that, and pretty good protection. That's kind of what you want to have right there. That's pretty good. Part of the problem is Duck Hodges gets, watch him, he's, his eyes have not left this side of the field. He is going over there no matter what. And that's a problem. So the Bills look like they rolled in some sort of cover three. Deep third, deep third, and they're going to match that vertical route there. And then Tredavious is going to match whatever vertical route comes here. And it just happens to be the outside guy, Deontay Johnson. So Johnson pushes vertical. Tredavious knows he's on him. But here's the thing. Wide receivers, if you can't break that, if you can't get on his toes when he's in off coverage in particular, you're in a lot of trouble because he's going to be able to stay in his back pedal and then break whichever way you go. It's a lot easier to break out of your pedal than it is to turn and then break. Johnson never pushes him out of his pedal. Watch Tredavious. He never gets out of his back pedal until it's time to break. Look at that. T-step and break on that bad boy. He never got him out of his pedal. And Hodges should have known that. Hodges should have known. That ball should have never been thrown. Should have never been thrown. He looked over there the whole way. He thought he had room. Looks like Johnson's maybe eaten up a little bit, but he never forced uh, Travis White to turn. And when that arm is cocked and ready to go, look at that. White's already breaking. He's already breaking for the ball. Now, compounding that fact is the fact that Hodges threw the ball back to the inside. Now, I know a lot of people are watching this going, well, wait a second, John. Why didn't Johnson just run a little speed out right here? Now, watch Teron Johnson. This is also what makes this throw tough, is Johnson's a hook to curl player. So he's going to play underneath that and make that throw just a little. See how he floats out there? That's just a little. He can't make a direct throw. He can't lead Johnson back this way because then Johnson picks it off. So good scheme, well executed by everybody. Even Johnson here and, and right there, Travis White making a pick. Now, with that protection, you pump, it's not there. Watch the middle. You got a little high-low situation here. Edmonds is playing the low. You got a high right here. Stick that ball right in the hole. Now you got a lot of room to run. If that's Kenny Stills or Will Fuller or DeAndre Hopkins, that's the route I want. I do not want to go at number 27, especially when he's off and he's lurking. If my protection's good, pull it down, don't like it, I got this high low in the middle, let's take that, that's big yardage. So good protect, everything here, good for the Steelers. Good routes. I mean, even Johnson runs a good route, but that's just the wrong throw to make against that player at that particular time. Read this coverage in the middle, stick that thing right here. You know Poyer's got to match that. So you got room to hit that over route right there and make Edmonds pay. Now, Milano could step back. But there's nobody really to help you on that. Now, Milano's coming, but you still could have stuck that right in there, and I know our quarterback can do that. Duck Hodges probably could not. That's why he threw the ball to Johnson. He got locked in on it, and Tredavious White made him pay. So, 
good scheme, good coaching, good execution, and great players up and down that roster make this Buffalo Bills defense very, very good, for lack of a better term. But they're explosive. They can turn you over. They can make life miserable for the Texans' offense if they don't mind their execution cues, reads, and what they're supposed to do. Do your job isn't something that just applies to the England Patriots. It should apply to every team, especially the Texans, on Sunday, Saturday, excuse me, going against this Bills defense. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content. Do you have a play you'd like me to break down? Leave it in the comments below.